by heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Full-Time Fantasy Show. FullTimeFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Full-Time Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. So yesterday we talked a little bit about Andrew Luck. We talked about Lamar Miller. And we talked about the Beat Dr. Roto draft. So I want to talk about a few more things today. Firstly, uh, A.J. Green. They're saying week three is the best case scenario for A.J. Green. Do we know that for sure? I mean, I think this is just a lot of people pontificating about what they think is right. Now, look, I'm going to tell you my guess. If everybody's throwing in a guess, I'm going to throw in my guess. I say A.J. Green week five. Now, look, this is a Dr. Rotoism that I'm giving you here. I tell you that I think players often return for home games. Why? Because home games are predictable. They know what they're going to do. They know where they're living. Road games, are you flying early? Where are the hotel? Uh, things are out of order. But week five, home against Arizona, no Patrick Peterson, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think because after that, it's week six at Baltimore, and then week seven is at Jacksonville, and I don't know whether I want Jalen Ramsey being his first game back. But I do want Arizona without Patrick Peterson. So that's the game that I'm circling for A.J. Green. Okay? Other people may say one thing. I'll say that. What round would I take A.J. Green in? Yeah, that I don't know. I'm going to check a world championship draft here. He went in round the middle of round six. Okay. Fair enough. He went in the middle of round six. Uh, I did not take him. Once again, was he on my list? I believe he was on my list at this point, but I went a different direction. I didn't take A.J. Green. Would I take A.J. Green? Maybe. I had a team that I could have taken A.J. Green, right? Because my team was uh, Tyreek Hill, Le'Veon Bell, Julian Edelman, Mike Williams, James White. I could have put Green there as my fourth guy. That would have made a lot of sense. I chose to go a different direction, but what my point is to you, my team could withstand that. So the team that picked four had, had Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon at the first three picks. That's a team that can't get A.J. Green. So you have to look at your roster construction, right? Your, if your roster construction dictates it, for me, he'd be my fourth receiver. The team that took him, he's actually his third receiver. Don't like it. I want A.J. Green as my number four guy who I'm not counting on. I don't want to be counting on A.J. Green who could be out for five weeks, right? That's not what I want to be doing, Okay. So, more news today. Dante Pettis dealing with a minor groin issue. I hate the words minor groin injuries. I just just don't like them. I think they end up becoming way more major than they need to be. The team that took Pettis actually has him as his fifth receiver. So, in some ways, that's really what I... Where Dante Pettis is going around seven. So, in this draft, he went in round seven, the eight, seven, eight. So you know what? If Dante Pettis is out for a couple of weeks, this team can get by without him. Doesn't need him. That's where you want to be taking Dante Pettis right now. When I see the words minor groin issue, I don't want to be taking a guy right now with those, with those words as my top three receiver. I'll take him at four. I'll take him at five. But I won't take him at one, two, three. Just won't do it. Okay? So I think you need to be smart. So when we're looking at roster construction, that it, so let's just talk about those words for a second. Roster construction. How did you go about building your team? It's kind of like building a house, right? How do you go about doing it? You put the slabs down. I, I'm, not, I'm not a builder. Let me tell you that much right now. But you put the slabs down. You think about it. You, you try to find, think about where the pieces fit in the house. I try to think about where the pieces fit on a fantasy football roster. Same thing with with fantasy baseball, by the way. Adam Ronas talks about it all the time, right? It's like pieces of a puzzle. So you got to know where they fit. And I think a lot of the mistakes that are made 
in drafts are made with roster construction. They just are. Let me see if I can go to a draft very quickly. Because um, this one was a really good... Uh, yeah, let me see. Give me one second, please. Please hold. Please continue to hold. Thank you for holding. So here's a team here. Okay. This was in the Beat Dr. Roto draft this weekend. This team took Travis Kelsey in round two. Okay, I can live with that. This team took Evan Engram in round seven. Okay, not my favorite, but I, because you're already at Kelsey, but I can live with it. Why did this team need David Nojoku in 10? How is that good roster construction? You've got three tight ends. But Dr. Roto, I could play all three. Are you really? Seriously, are you really going to play all three? I mean, most teams should draft two. But there are a lot of teams in this draft who only drafted one. And I can't blame them for that. And retrospectively, I look at that and go, give me one guy. If my one guy sucks, I'll find another guy. I don't want to roster crappy players. But three? That makes no sense to me. You can draft two. Two makes sense. Three? It's just bad roster construction. Right? And you got to think about these things. You got to think about how things fit onto your roster. Don't draft in a vacuum. Don't draft in a vacuum. Now, admittedly, I, I want to go out. I'll, I'll make a miss. I'll tell you, I made a big mistake in one of my drafts recently. This was the World Championship draft, and I made a mistake. I was pick nine, and it was like the last two rounds, and I didn't see, I didn't notice that the three teams after me had already had their defenses. And I picked a defense in round 19. That was stupid. I should have picked something else and then picked the defense in round 20 because I knew they already, had, I should have known that they already had defenses. That was my mistake. Okay? One that I don't make often. And one that you can guarantee I'm not making anytime soon. Right? The point being, don't draft in a vacuum. Know what people are doing. Understand the picks understand the roster construction, and see how it fits in your roster. Okay? Now, let's talk about something else with roster construction and something I've been seeing way too much. And I'm going to use the beat Dr. Roto draft. Okay? Team 1 took Christian McCaffrey. No backup. Team 2, Saquon Barkley. No backup. Team 3, Alvin Kamara. This team also does have Latavius Murray. Smart. That's smart. Because if one of those guys goes down, he's got the other guy. All right. I took Fournette. I have Rykel Armstead. The next team, no backup. The next team, no backup. The next team took Joe Mixon, backed up with Gio Bernard. That's fine. The next team took Zeke. Where's Pollard? Round eight, he took Darwin Thompson. Now, I love Darwin Thompson, but that team needed to be taken Pollard. The next team takes David Johnson, backed him up with Chase Evans. That's smart. Gurley, team did not do anything there. The Nick Chubb team did not do anything there. Uh, this that, that team took Jordan Scarlett. By the way, the team won, should have taken Jordan, Jordan Scarlett like round 19. And then the Le'Veon Bell team did not take Ty Montgomery. I think we got to do a better job of that. I think we have to do a better job of taking our backups. I just think it's, a, it's an opportunity missed because when, God forbid, your guy goes down, when your guy goes down, do you have the backup? The team was Kamara and Latavius Murray. That guy's covered. Something happens to Kamara, boom, Murray's the dude. Something happens to Murray, boom, Kamara's even better. I, I, I don't look at it as a wasted pick. I don't. I don't look at it as a wasted pick. I look at it as a potentially smart pick. If I own Ezekiel Elliott, I'm telling you straight up, I'm taking Tony Pollard. I would. I would have taken Tony Pollard if I was this guy instead of Evan Ingram because you already had Travis Kelsey. You can't afford to miss. If you're going to draft Zeke early, you, you can't afford to screw it up. Right? So think these things through when you're making drafts. That's all I can tell you is think these things through. I don't know why a lot of people don't do that. It's not hard, right? You take Zeke, you should have Pollard. You take Melvin Gordon, do you have Justin Jackson? So I see Justin Jackson went in round nine here. 
Melvin Gordon went in round four. So the team, I don't know. Maybe I thought that maybe the team that took Jackson might have taken him in nine. I I I won't bust that guy that for that. I won't because I think Jackson should be going in nine or ten. That's fair. So this is the beat Dr. Roto draft. I'm gonna go back to the world championship draft that I was in. Let's see if it's any different. Let's see what these guys did. Maybe the high stakes players did a better job. Maybe they didn't. So the team that had Saquon did not do it. The team that had McCaffrey did not back him up. The team that had Kamara did not back him up. The team that Zeke did not back him up. The team that has Damian Williams did not back him up. The team with carry on. Nope. The team with David Johnson. Nope. The team with Joe Mixon, nope. The team with Le'Veon Bell, nope. The team with Dalvin Cook, did. Took Alexander Madison in round 10. The team with Chubb, did not. And the team with James Conner and Josh Jacobs, did not. So one team out of 12. Now, let me tell you why this happened. Why did this happen in the World Championship draft? Because in the World Championship drafts, everybody's looking for these running backs. We're not going to let you get your backup. This is not a local league. Hey, can I get my backup? Okay, yeah, sure, Doc. No, no. In high stakes, we're going after the value. Always. So, you know, I took Le'Veon Bell in this draft. I thought I was going to get Ty Montgomery. I put him on my queue. I thought I'd take him like round 13. He went in round 11. I was horrified. I literally was horrified. I'm like, What? Are you kidding me? But you know what? I guess I understand it. This team doesn't want to play around. And this team, if Bell gets hurt, thinks that Montgomery's good, and he stashed him. And I'm not going to take my backup that early. I'm not going to take Ty Montgomery in round 10. I don't, I don't regret it. Maybe I should have. Maybe if I had to do it over again, I would have thought that way. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not going to force value when it doesn't exist. Ty Montgomery is a round 15 player, in my opinion. So if somebody wants to take him at 11, maybe this guy will cut him and I'll be able to pick him up in a couple of weeks. That's how I look at it. That is how I look at it. So I want you guys to really focus on roster construction. Okay? I think it's critical. I do. I think it's absolutely critical. So there are a lot of contests happening this week. Okay? So... You know, tonight there's an online championship draft. There's a world championship draft with one spot available. Tomorrow night there's a Beat Dr. Roto and a world championship draft. Uh, I have another Beat Dr. Roto on Friday. I mean, you just got to go to playffwc.com right now and get yourself into one of our drafts. And I know you want to, right? If you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you want to. You want to be part of what we're doing. Now, look, I talk about this all the time. If you want to think you're the best fantasy football player, you got to play against the other great fantasy football players. You may have won your home league three or four years in a row, and for that, I congratulate you. I am not disrespecting you in the least. I'm not. It is an accomplishment to win a fantasy football league. But that doesn't mean you're the best player out there. you got to play against the big boys to see if you're the best. Right? You want to be the best? You want everybody to say you're the best outside of your home league? you got to go and play in high, some high-stakes leagues, right? And then you work, and th- you may lose. I'm going to be honest with you. You may lose, but that's okay because then you're going to get smarter and you're going to get better. And that's what this is all about. I want to be a better fantasy football player today than I was last year. And I was pretty darn good last year, right? But I'm always trying to think, of new wrinkles, new ideas, what can take me to the next level? Is it a stat? Is it something that I can study? Is it a a person I can follow? Is it some ranking system? Is it a site that I can join? Whatever that may be, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is, but I'm willing to find it. I said to somebody recently, if you're not on Twitter, you're crazy. How are you not on Twitter if you were playing fantasy football? Are you not subscribing to the Twitter feeds of guys who are covering the teams? you got to be doing that. That's the least that you could do. Seriously, that is the least that you could do. 
And then you join sites like ours at fulltimefantasy.com. By the way, enter the promo code ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And you follow me. You follow Ronus. You follow Sean Childs. You read our stuff. You look at our rankings. You look at our articles. You listen to our podcasts. That's how you get better. Getting better is not easy. Doesn't happen overnight. But it does happen and you can do it. I have faith in you. You know I do. But right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. By the way, as we get more news, I will always put it for you here or in an article. But remember, check out my tier. My quarterback tiers are up and my running back tiers will be up later today. If you go to si.com backslash fantasy, you'll be able to find them. I love tier drafting. You'll see where I like guys. You'll see what tiers I put them in. And I hope that helps you in your drafts. All right, guys, this is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to Full-Time Fantasy. There's never been a better time to join and go full-time. Visit FullTimeFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. The experts from FullTimeFantasy.com are brought to you exclusively right here on iHeartRadio. We'll be right back with more from Full Time. Coming up, more from Full Time's Real Money winners. We'll be right back. 